Let me begin today's presentation by saying, if you know me or if you've seen my other videos, you probably have observed that I don't typically indulge in the accoutrements of Chinese medicine or uh, Qigong practice. But recently, one of my students gave me this beautiful Chinese jacket, and I thought that this would be the perfect opportunity to show it off. So, uh, Joe, thank you very much. I really do like the jacket. Taiji Ruler and Circling Hands are two names for what are essentially the same Qigong practice, so I'll be using those names interchangeably throughout this video. It makes use of the circular movements found in the Taiji form, and conversely, in a mutually supportive way, the circular movements and the Neigong and Qigong components found in Circling Hands can be layered back into Taiji promoting greater circularity, increased qi flows, and more internal power within the Taiji form. Circles are made in all different planes as one advances in this practice. Those include vertical, horizontal, diagonal, and coronal circles in order to address all the possible directions used in Taiji and to provide the broadest range of applications. Now here we're going to only focus on one circle, the forward moving vertical circle. As simple as that may seem at first, you'll see that it's actually a very rich, detailed, and multi-layered practice with far-reaching health and longevity benefits. It contains numerous components that can be difficult to see clearly when Taiji Ruler is demonstrated in full, so I'm going to introduce some of those components one at a time before eventually combining them into the full practice for you. There are more parts to circling hands than can be shown in a short video, but what follows is a more or less typical progression of training, the way you might learn these things in a class, making it easier for you to observe and understand all it contains. First, you'll see how to link your hands energetically on your side channels. This will increase your sensitivity to qi and lay the foundation for you to be able to project and absorb chi from your hands later on in your practice. Next, you'll see the forward circling movements of the hands as they remain on the side channels. By itself, this can release tension from the nervous system, reduce stress, promote a sense of calm well-being, and create a smooth, continuous flow of chi within this practice. Next, you'll see how to do a basic qua squat. This Neigong component will increase your awareness of internal energy mechanics, will greatly amplify qi flows through your side channels, will improve your immune system functioning by massaging the inguinal lymph glands, and will uh, improve and promote your genital health. Now, the qua squat opening and closing serves as a good introduction for openings and closings throughout your entire body, which is a prerequisite for all longevity qigongs. And even in taiji, there's a saying, without openings and closings, there is no taiji. So this is an important one to get. Next, the spinal C curve is introduced. This increases space between all the vertebrae and lengthens the spine, uh, which reduces back pain, improves nerve conduction throughout the entire nervous system, and it also facilitates the rising and falling of qi throughout the microcosmic orbit. The last component I'm introducing today is the microcosmic orbit, which on one level moves qi through two core acupuncture channels called the Ren and the Dew Meridians, also known as the conception and governing vessels. This improves health in many more ways than I can even begin to talk about here and it promotes uh, mental clarity and emotional balance. It's also a significant part of the path towards spiritual growth and development. Now, in the Western world, the microcosmic orbit has been introduced primarily as a seated meditation, but traditionally, classically in Taoist communities, the microcosmic orbit was always first learned as part of the moving practice of circling hands, as you'll be seeing here. In the last few minutes of this video, all of these parts are combined and demonstrated with two common variations. While the qua squat and the C-curve are actually in both variations, the first one emphasizes the qua squat over the C-curve, and the second one emphasizes the C-curve over the qua squat.
Taiji ruler gets its name from the common practice of using a physical ruler to connect your hands at the optimal distance apart directly on the side channels, two core energy pathways that run through your torso, legs, arms, and head. Within the torso, those channels are delimited by the qua on the lower end and the shoulder's nest at the top. The qua and shoulder's nests are bilateral energy centers used in Taiji ruler and other qigongs, as well as in Taiji. The ruler itself is a wooden dowel designed to be held between the palms, touching and stimulating the laogong points there. Since body sizes vary considerably, it can be difficult to find a ruler that will put your hands directly on your side channels. Instead, with practice you can learn to feel the laogong points in the center of your palms first, and then connect them energetically like a beam while keeping your hands on your side channels. Lao Gong is the most energetically sensitive point in your hands, very useful in cultivating your awareness of Qi in this and other Qi Gong practices. Once you get comfortable with it, you can expand that felt connection to include a Qi ball held between the hands. This can be made into a separate Qi Gong practice called Dragon Playing with a Pearl. Dragon Playing with a Pearl is explored at length in my first book, Chinese Healing Exercises. The spherical nature of the chi ball works very well with the other circles used in circling hands. With your hands remaining on your side channels, you next want to move them in a forward vertical circle. They should pass through all the numbers of a clock face. Here you can see them moving through the 12 o'clock, 3 o'clock, 6 o'clock, and 9 o'clock positions in a clockwise fashion. On the right, notice how the hands remain on the side channels even when moving above the shoulders and head. This will allow you to move more chi through the side channels for a greater energetic benefit. The gentle, continuous, circular motion helps to release tension from the nervous system, reducing stress while promoting well-being and a profound calmness. I've known some teachers to only include this much training in an introductory Taiji ruler class since it's so beneficial all by itself. The Kwa is both a body cavity and an energetic structure deep within the inguinal fold where the leg joins the torso. Opening and closing the Kwa in a squat amplifies Qi flows through the side channels and by extension makes more Qi available to the entire body. It also massages the inguinal lymph glands, strengthening immune system functions, and benefits the prostate gland. Here are some of its main characteristics. In a pure qua squat, the back is kept straight. As you can see, straight doesn't necessarily mean perpendicular to the ground, only that there is no bend in it. The qua itself must open and close, compress and expand. This is what causes the lowering and raising of the torso, as well as providing its previously mentioned benefits. The knees remain centered over the feet and do not move forward on the squat nor rearward on the rise. This qua squat is one important Nagong component used in many Qigongs and in Taiji. The spinal C curve improves back health by increasing space between the vertebrae, decompressing the spinal cord and nerves, and facilitates Qi flow through the microcosmic orbit. Here are some of its important features. The head moves forward and down towards the tailbone, while the tailbone moves forward and up towards the head.
Simultaneously, the mid-back moves rearward on the bend, creating an obvious bowing of the spine. From that midpoint, the spine lengthens both upwards and downwards, maximizing space between the rear part of the vertebrae. Rising up from the curve, the front of the spine also lengthens up and down from the midpoint. This creates more space between the front of each vertebra. In this way, the whole spinal column is lengthened incrementally. The spinal C-curve replicates the fetal state of the spine. A part of Taoist thought includes the concept that to increase healthy longevity, a person must reclaim the attributes of the body in its most youthful state. This is also a consideration in reverse breathing, also called prenatal breathing, since the fetus draws all nourishment, including oxygen and chi, through the umbilicus, a process facilitated by the spinal C-curve. While reverse breathing is beyond the scope of this presentation, it is the preferred breathing style when practicing circling hands with the spinal C-curve. The microcosmic orbit is a major chi pathway, actively transporting chi in a way similar to other acupuncture meridians. Qi circulates through it whether or not one practices Qigong, but this practice deepens its effects and benefits. On the right, you can see that the pathway is accurately portrayed within the body, under the skin. On the left, you'll soon see a representation of it outside the body, due only to my limited graphics abilities. But you clearly see that the entire microcosmic orbit is constantly in motion, circulating qi just as a river circulates water simultaneously through its entire pathway. Each point shown on the right has its own specific functions and purposes, and should be learned and felt only after the general microcosmic orbit becomes familiar, as they add considerable depth to the practice. Here's an overview of some important points. Chang Chang is the first point on the Du or governing vessel and governs the sacral pump. Ming Mun, sometimes referred to as the rear Dan Tian, is directly behind the navel and strongly influences the kidneys. Ji Zhong, directly behind the solar plexus, influences the adrenal glands. Nao Hu influences the pituitary gland and governs the cranial pump. Bai Hui is the meeting point of all yang meridians and connects a person's qi to celestial qi involved in spiritual cultivation. Yin Tong influences the pineal gland and can be used to cultivate psychic awareness. Tian Tu influences the thyroid gland and governs self-expression. Tan Zhang influences the thymus gland and governs the qi of the entire body. Ju Chui communicates with the heart and influences relational energies between self and all other beings. Qi Hai is directly in front of the lower Dan Tian, helping to build energy and regulate its many functions. Hui Yin is the first point on the Ren or conception vessel located in the perineum. It influences genital health and connects a person's chi with terrestrial chi. This image portrays a fully activated microcosmic orbit, showing Bai Hui connected with celestial chi and Hui Yin connected with terrestrial chi. This is the first of the two most common ways Taiji Willer is practiced, where the Qua Squat is emphasized over the spinal C curve. Taiji players may prefer this version since opening and closing the qua is an important feature in Taiji and powers its many circular movements. 
Notice that there is a slight C curve. The spine is not held completely straight as it would be when practicing quad squats by themselves. All other aspects of Taiji Ruler are in play, with hands remaining energetically connected on the side channels, forming forward moving vertical circles with microcosmic orbit circulation. This version is well suited for people relatively new to quad squats, since the larger physical movement of the squat helps to close and open the quad. Pulsing the qua is an important nagung component, strongly pumping chi through the side channels, making more chi available for all aspects of this practice. This is a useful variation for people who may have back problems and are unable to perform the spinal C curve to its fullest extent. Notice that there is a subtle weight shift here. The weight shifts forward while the hands are circling from the 6 o'clock to 12 o'clock positions, stimulating yong twen, the bubbling wall point near the ball of the foot. This causes chi to rise, facilitating chi rising up the back in the microcosmic orbit. Weight shifts rearward to the heels as the hands circle down from the 12 o'clock to 6 o'clock position, stimulating the Shermian heel point. This causes chi to drop, facilitating chi dropping down the front of the body in that portion of the microcosmic orbit. The spinal C curve variation is the most complete way to practice circling hands. Let's review all of its previously demonstrated components. First, your hands are energetically connected at the Lao Gong points, either by a beam or a chi ball as shown here. Hands stay on the side channels as they raise and lower through their circular path. This continues throughout the entire practice. Remember that each component is cumulative. Next, keep your hand movements completely circular, moving through all the numbers on a clock face. This circular movement releases tension from the nervous system most effectively, and promotes a smooth, continuous circulation of chi throughout the microcosmic orbit and in other chi pathways used here. While we haven't addressed breathing, for now the most important thing is to keep your breath smooth, even, and continuous. The circular hand movement will help with that. All of these parts work together in a beautiful, perfect synergy. The C curve includes the head and tailbone moving towards each other, the mid spine moving rearward, and the spine lengthening upwards and downwards while bending. The front of the spine lengthens when straightening from the C curve. There is an opening and closing of the qua here too. While its outer movement is less obvious, the internal open and close is as strong as it is in the quad squat variation. The microcosmic orbit is an important feature of circling hands. The C curve and forward weight shift greatly facilitate the rising of the chi up the back while lengthening the front of the spine with a rearward weight shift aids in lowering the chi down the front of the body. The individual points along that pathway can be added once the microcosmic orbit is circulating clearly and effortlessly. Let's introduce one last component, projecting chi from the hands and then drawing it back in. We've seen that Bai Hui connects the body to celestial chi and Hui Yin connects the body to terrestrial chi. Here we'll be interfacing with the chi of the immediate environment through the hands. In this representation, chi is accurately shown to move out through the yang meridians of the outer arm. Harder to clearly portray, chi is drawn in through the yin meridians of the inner arm.
The chi that's drawn in joins with the chi of the side channels and the microcosmic orbit, contributing to the net gain of chi at the close of this practice. To end, environmental chi is drawn directly to the Dan Tian, while the chi circulating through the microcosmic orbit is simultaneously dropped to the Dan Tian. All chi felt throughout the body is then gently guided to the Dan Tian, where it stills and settles for storage. The relative simplicity of the outer movement makes this the perfect vehicle for layering in increasingly more subtle internal components. That's really what makes circling hands such a, a fun thing to practice. You can start off as a complete beginner and then grow with it through intermediate and advanced levels over time. There's really a lot contained in this practice, much more than I can even show you in this video. So I hope you find this enjoyable and educational and just maybe you might be inspired to take up the practice yourself. That would be the best possible outcome I could hope for.